quite a few of them come back to visit with families of their own. Now, you take the Andersons right next door to here at 135. Wonderful folks. They've been on my route practically since I first started. The year they moved in was the year their oldest daughter, Kate, started first grade. Now she's grown and got some big wig job in Washington, D.C. Yep, hardly ever see her anymore. Their son Brian comes back a lot, though. He and his family are out in Dallas. Then there's Rob. Married a boy from over on Springwood Circle. I deliver to his folks, too. Robin's got three or four kids. They're up in Fort Knox, Kentucky. Career military, you know. And Rachel, the youngest, she just had her first baby. She's all the way out in San Diego. Yeah, Anderson family's got itself awful spread out these days. Like a lot of families, I guess. You might say I'm the one holding the thing together if you get my meaning. Me and the uh, telephone company, that is. Yeah, most mornings when I come around the corner here with the mailbag, Miss Anderson's there waiting for me to see if I got something from one of her kids. Well, in fact, here she comes right now. Well, good morning, Charlie. Morning, Ms. Anderson. These folks here are looking at the old Morgan place. They're thinking of moving in. Well, that would be fine. It would be wonderful to have a young family in the neighborhood again. I think you'd like it here. 
Best mail delivery in town, <laughs> eh, Charlie? Sure thing. I hope you, if you need anything at all, you'll come and let me know. I'm just right next door. Be glad to do anything. Oh, well, thank you very much. Nice to meet you, too. Bye now. Nice folks. Sure are. I hope they move into this old place and fix it up. I wouldn't mind delivering mail to this address again. Oh, and speaking of mail, Ms. Anderson, I've got quite a few important-looking letters for you oh, here today. Oh, Charlie, good. What have you got? Well, let's see here. <laughs> Looks like a uh, card from Washington, D.C. That would be Kate. A uh, letter from... Fort Knox. Oh, from Robin Hood. And a nice fat manila envelope from San Diego. Oh, the baby pictures from Rachel. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> and last but not least, you've got one from Dallas. From Brian? Well, he never writes. Goodness. Looks like you hit the jackpot, Miss Anderson. All four kids in one day. I'd say this is a definite first. Well, sure is. I'm glad for you. See you on Thank Monday you, morning, Charlie. then, Miss Anderson. See you later. George! George, honey! Come on out! I've got something for you. Something special! <laughs> So get ready. Your firstborn, Kate. I'm so glad she's taking the time off. She needs a vacation. She works much too hard. You know, I was kind of worried about her the last time I saw her. Well, let's see. This one's from Ryan. It says, Dear folks, I just can't, can't say for sure yet when we'll be able to get home for the big anniversary deal. I've got a host, but I can't guarantee it. We'll let you know soon. I miss you lots. Brian. Well, you've got Robin's there. you. What'd she say? Yeah, let's see. Dear Mom and Dad, we're so excited about the anniversary party. Forty years is really, really something to, to celebrate. Gary and I and the kids will definitely be there. Are you sure you have room for us? We can stay at Uncle Julian's, or at least put the two boys there. I've been so homesick for everyone lately. For you and Kate and Rachel and Ryan. 
it seems so funny here i am thirty something years old two states away with a husband and kids of my own and still when someone says the word home my mind jumps back to one thirty five clark court
what we've got here. Looks like a box from your Aunt Robin. Let's see what's inside. Oh, wow, look what we've got here for you, Miss Amy. It's a whole big box of hand-me-downs. We'll have to have a fashion show in a little bit, okay? Let's see what she has to say. Dear Rachel, thought you might like these hand-me-downs for Amy. I can hardly believe it's been six years since Lauren fit into these things. Seems like yesterday I was making bottles and changing diapers and praying, Lord, will it never end? Well, guess what? It did. Suddenly there are no babies, only three very independent, rapidly changing people. Rusty is still a sports fanatic. I think he must know the batting average of every baseball player in the country. That really impresses Sean. He wants to be just like his big brother. And as for Lauren, she's still our dreamer. You ought to see some of her artwork, Rach. I think she's really, really good. Of course, the refrigerator is her own personal art gallery. Seems like they were all babies just day before yesterday. Where did the time disappear to? Thank you. 
a little lesson like little boys every day. Oh, the pleasure of watching the children grow in eyes mixed with the wisdom of knowing the watercolor ponies will one day, one day, For another look. Well, you can do a lot worse than buying right here on Clark Court. <coughs> you see, there's a lot of love in these old houses, if you get my meaning. A lot of laughing and fussing and making up and starting over. A lot of grieving and a lot of celebrating. Yep, yep, that's a fact. You can do a whole lot worse. Well, see you folks later. Good morning, Charlie. How are you today? Oh, I kind of pulled my shoulder out yesterday, Ms. Anderson. Haven't been moving too good all morning. Got a few things for you here, though. Oh, you do? Yeah, it looks like mostly some bills and a couple of advertisements. Hmm. Thanks, Charlie. Hope your shoulder gets to feeling better. Well, I'm going to go put a little heat on tonight. That'll fix it. See you in the morning then, Miss Anderson. Bye, Charlie. George? George, honey? I've got some coffee made. Can you take a break and have some? It's decaf. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Was that Charlie with the mail? Any news from Brian? No, still don't have any. I guess that means he doesn't know if he can get off yet. You know, hon, last time that Brian and Beth were here, well, I just kind of had the feeling that they weren't getting along too well. I've been sort of worried. Well, now, there you go again with your overactive intuition. You know, we gave those kids an honor for the Lord years ago, and I just got to believe he took them. Oh, honey, I'm sure Brian and Beth are doing just fine. He's probably having a difficult time getting off of work. That job of his is quite demanding, you know. George? Hmm? Does it seem like 40 years to you? No, it doesn't. Actually, when I look at the mirror, it seems like 140 years. <laughs> You still say the sweetest things. George? What? Do you get tired of hearing me say this sometimes? Say what? I love you, George. I love you too, dear. Well, Miss Anderson. Well, thanks, Willie. I'll take it. Well, while we're due for a break anyway. No, this one's for Brian. Dear Kate, hey big sis, this is going to be a tough one to write, so maybe I better just get to the point. The fact is, Beth and I have been having trouble for quite a while. It's not just the stress of this new job, though I'm sure that's part of it. She feels like I'm never at home when she needs me, and I feel like I need her support, not a constant criticism. Anyway, things have really gone from bad to worse since we saw you at Christmas. Somehow, I just can't find a way to tell Mom and Dad, but I just had to tell somebody. Six weeks ago, we decided to uh, separate for a while to see if it would help. 
So Beth took Nellie, and they've been staying with her parents in Tulsa. I drive over there every other weekend to be with Nellie. She's really hurting Kate. Actually, all three of us are. I know this is not what God wants for us, but I just don't know how to go about putting it back together. Please pray for us, especially for Nellie. Poor little girl. I've tried a million different ways to explain it all to her, but she just doesn't understand. Her world is in pieces.
think that life is always like a Disney movie. You guys have had some tough times, Bri, financial and otherwise, and I know that. But the life you and Beth have together is so valuable, so worth fighting for. Maybe being single makes me feel it even more strongly. I just want to urge you to hold on, Bri. Whatever the problem is, God can help you find your way back to each other. I know he can. I'm praying for you every day, little brother that the Lord will heal the wounds, that he'll strengthen you, and give you and Beth whatever it takes to hold on.
Ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, and neighbors of George and Miriam Anderson, you are hereby cordially invited to celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary at a party hosted by their children and grandchildren, Saturday, April the 5th, at 6 p.m. at the Anderson Homestead, 135 Clark Court. Be sure to bring a tribute, a memory, or an old photograph for their memory book. Congratulations. And 
Now I'll invite more eloquent tributes and toasts from among the ranks of those who know you best and love you most. Who'd like to go first? I'll start. I'll start. <laughs> okay. This is for Mimi. A salute and three cheers for putting up with George for 40 years. <laughs> Lauren would like to say something. Mimi, Grandpa, you are the best grandparents in the world, and I want to, and I brought you my favorite picture. It's a pony. It's for you. Oh, Lauren. Oh, that's just beautiful. Look what Lauren painted. Mom, Dad, I don't guess I've ever admired you more than I do today. Dad, I look at you and I feel <laughs> just about like when I was eight. You were my little league coach. I wanted to grow up to be just like you. To stand for the things that you stand for. To be the kind of husband and father that you are. Well, Mimi and George, mine I think is more of a memory than a tribute. I remember the first time that you had us over for dinner when we moved into the neighborhood. You know, I had never been in a family that had really prayed together. Not just a mechanical blessing, but a real prayer. You know, I didn't come from a family like that. Not by a long shot. My childhood was, well, let's just say it was different. That night I went home and I cried. I cried for what I had missed as a child. And I cried for what Bill and I had never had and for what our children were missing. But when I quit crying, I was able to pray for the first time a real prayer. I said, God, if you're there and it's not too late, then I want you in my life and in my family. And he said, I'm there and it's not too late. So I just thank God for all of these wonderful friends. And I thank you, and thank you, Mimi and George, for what you did in our lives. <coughs> Mom, Dad, <coughs> I know that so much of who I am has to do with who you are. Your values are my values now, and your faith in Jesus Christ has become my own. Everything I know about love and loyalty and courage, I learned by growing up in this house. It's not a small thing to know that when you're growing up, you feel that it's safe and important and uh, loved. And it's not a small thing to know that every time you open the front door, love will be waiting for you. I love you, Mom and Dad. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. I guess I just want to prepare you for all the love that would be in this place tonight. Looking at this bride of mine surrounded by all the flowers and candles and all our friends. I don't believe I'm going to be able to help myself. I'm just going to have to make a toast to my own. Now, me and me, you know I'm not much of a singer, but now seems like the perfect time to sing that song for you that you love so much. And y'all going to have to Come on in and help me sing to my very best girl.
Lord, only you can give us the power to love as you love. The power to laugh and find joy and hope with each other in the good times. You're the only one that can keep us holding on and believing in the hard times. For God, we know there will be hard times. Keep us faithful when we go. God, keep us strong when we get so tired. And most of all, Lord, keep us always turning back to you for everything we need. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of family. Mm -hmm.